Hey, it's time for vo voiceover body shop tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. And it's number 96. <laughs> tech talk number 96. Can you believe that number? Put it back up there, Sue. 96. Look at that. Been doing this for so many years, and there's still tons of stuff to talk about. You know the thing about tech, it never stops moving. It, it doesn't. We're actually going to talk about that in a little bit as well. But you got lots of stuff to cover here in your tech mm -hmm. update. We're going to talk about how the marketplace has changed mm -hmm. and how you can adapt to mm -hmm. now and all sorts of cool stuff about equipment. So stay tuned. Ask your questions live on Facebook if you happen to be watching live. And if you are not watching live, well, remember, you can always write your questions in for next time. Anyway, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Yes, we're talking tech <laughs> here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's amazing how technology has changed. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But the thing is, you've got to be able to keep up to date with it. And if you don't really understand all the things that go on in your home voiceover studio, because that's what it's allowing us to do all the things that we do in voiceover today, uh, you got to talk to people who actually know what they're doing. And I spend a lot of time online and look at the questions that people ask on Facebook mm -hmm. and LinkedIn and stuff. And people sure. chime in, well, I use this. Well, I use that. And the fact of the matter is, and you've heard me say this a hundred times before, uh, or at least 96 times before, this is <laughs> tech talk number 96. Everybody is an expert in one studio and one voice, except for maybe a handful of people mm -hmm. out there in the voiceover world that actually know what we're talking about because we're talking about very specific places, which is your home voiceover studio. And a home voiceover studio is a unique environment because every voice is different. Every room is different. Everything's different. So you need somebody who can understand the basics and how to transform your space into a proper recording space. That's right. Every time you ask those questions on those groups, you're basically taking a survey. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know how to interpret that survey information, you're right. going to be really confused about what to do with that information. Right. And as you, so many different answers you're going to get. Right. And as you like, as, as you like <laughs> to say, don't crowdsource your home voiceover studio. It can be changed. <laughs> it would really, when you work with us, it's a shortcut. Yeah. It's really what it is, you know, because we have worked with so many others and we've seen what works and what doesn't work. We've bounced things off of each other. We've bounced things off of our colleagues. We've taken copious notes. Believe me, it's, it, yeah, it's an investment up front, but the time you save, the direct information you get, absolutely really is worth it. Yeah. That's so if you want to talk with one of us and work with one of us, and look at all the services that we offer to help you have a really good home voiceover studio. If they want to talk to George, who's got a major company that is growing, how do they get a hold of you? Yes. Well, you can still reach us at georgethe.tech, soon to be also georgethe.tech, but a whole new version. I'm not, we don't have a release date quite yet, oh, but we are so close. 2.0.1. We are one. so close. I'm yeah. you. <laughs> um, but the new site's coming soon, but we have, we, we have uh, myself, of course, available, but many others on our team now available to, to take your support requests for your specific things. We have specialists now. 
you yeah. know, and you don't need a doctor referral. You can go right to the specialist. <laughs> and uh, so it's it's a really cool thing. So it's all over at George the dot tech. Stay tuned for that new site, but we're we're available to take your bookings, and we have the nine one one emergency support hotline too, wow. which uh, has saved a lot of people's bacon <laughs> gig. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, but anyway, Dan, you're doing stuff over on the web at Home Voiceover Studio dot com. You. Yeah, uh, go on over there. Uh, my site is set up to make things really simple for you. Mm -hmm. One of the things I offer, of course, and apparently my cup runneth over this week, uh, <laughs> is my specimen collection cup. Uh, you can send me a raw file. People are saying, look at all the processing I use. Is this right? No. Uh, try not to process your stuff. I want to see it raw. I want to see what your, your studio sounds like without you doing anything to it because <laughs> you're really not supposed to be doing anything to it. We're going to get your studio sounding right physically but you go to there click on the specimen collection cup and send me a specimen for 25 dollars. i will show you you know what's working in your studio and what's not and if we need to do a little bit more further consultation we can discuss that but i i teach this stuff i've been doing webinars uh mm -hmm. we've got conferences coming up and i love teaching at conferences uh so stay tuned for announcements and all that stuff uh that's that's really important uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, you can get a hold of me. Too. Yeah. Get a hold of me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com and let's talk home voiceover studio. So you got a lot of pile of stuff here in your, your update of the week. Go for we it. Sure do. You have the floor, <laughs> sir. Some pile, some of it's more pile than others. <laughs> um, but anyway, quickly, there is now multi-channel audio input control in zoom. And so that really Whoa. makes Zoom different from every other um, conferencing app I'm aware of because now you can choose which channel feeds into Zoom. Oh. So normally Zoom feeds all channels into Zoom, right? That can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing depending on your, on your interface. But right. everybody on Apollos and RMEs and some of the more complicated interfaces that have multiple ins, multiple outs, this is, this is big time for you because you can now – finally tell zoom no i want you to hear only my mic uh -huh. i don't want you to hear what's coming back from zoom i don't want you to hear what's coming in on the mic in the other room right just this one mic and you can finally do that or you can say i want to hear this mic and i do want to hear what plays back in twisted wave oh. so you can there's oh, more that's... things you can do with with uh, this new version it's it's definitely a beta it's got some little quirks like it doesn't remember the setting each time you start the apps, you have to always remember to go back in and reset it. Mm -hmm. A little annoying, but i um, really glad to hear that. And I, I have to say, I don't know to com who to completely attribute this to, but I do know for a fact that Tim Friedlander did talk to Zoom about something two years ago and said, please do something about this. And I don't know the journey that that took from their meeting to now, but finally the features. In there. Yeah. They, they were very busy for the last two years. <laughs> yeah. I was really glad that they paid attention, though. I mean, they eventually did it. Um, so that's cool, interesting update. And really, it does not affect anybody with standard two-channel interfaces. If you're on, you know, a Scarlet or uh, anything that just has two in, two out, not, not an issue for you guys, really. Um, next thing. Actually, that's not entirely true. So, <laughs> so right. if you've got two mics in your booth, let's say you're only using the 416, which you right. have a TLM 103, and it's sitting right, right over here. Mm -hmm. If you're talking into the TLM one of the 416 over here, Zoom is still hearing the 103 over here. So even though you might be sending what th sounds to you like good audio and maybe they're hearing good audio, if both mics are on and both mics are gained up on your Scarlet, Zoom is still going to hear both mics all the time. Uh -huh. So it won't sound quite as good. It'll sound phasey and weird. So yeah. now it is. it could be helpful for you guys as well. Okay. Moving on, um, fire. This is something we just heard about. Firewire, Firewire support <laughs> is no longer in Ventura. So if you've got some folks still are hanging on to an older Mackie Onyx Firewire mixer right. that didn't burn out or catch fire or just fate, <laughs> who knows what by now, um, and uh, it that feature is dead. Now Byron Wagner, good old Byron, posted an unbelievably comp kind of <laughs> well, that's the way you usually explain thing things to try to fix this and i i i trust that it may be able to work but it's a hack and so basically no more 
actual FireWire in Ventura. Mm. So it, Thunderbolt includes the FireWire spec, and it has for many years now, but that spec is gone. They just said, well, it, we don't need it anymore. FireWire is long dead. So. so I can take all the FireWire cables that are piled up in the closet here and use them for a clothesline. Oh, yeah, clothesline, <laughs> weave something. Right. <laughs> I used to have a bin in my car that says FireWire, and now it says Thunderbolt. I took uh, all the firewire out. Um, anyway, that's just a little funky update. Again, that doesn't affect many of you, but it's <laughs> a very small percentage may run into this problem. Um, Universal Audio Sphere LX microphone. They now are selling this super amazing multi-pattern microphone that can emulate all the classic microphones very faithfully. They're now selling it under the Universal Audio brand. It's no longer the Towns and Labs Sphere. Uh, um, and they have their, their entry-level one. Still a thousand dollars, but they have a less expensive one that it was absolutely all that you would need. You don't need the fifteen hundred dollar mic, and so the price point for getting into these kind of modeling mics that pretend to be other microphones um, is getting more affordable. That said, you still really want to have an Apollo to really get everything out of this in the most seamless way possible. But you don't need the Apollo. You can record the audio and add all that effects later. So if you want to record into your Townsend and then later apply a U87 to it, well, you can do that. Um, if you so, feel the need to do that. If you feel the need. <laughs> honestly, the mic itself, the, the, the Sphere mic itself, when you turn off all models, sounds fantastic. It's just if you're trying to get that, if someone's like, I insist that you're on a U87 sound, well, this it does it pretty faithfully. I, I, yeah, and you know what I think about all that. It, yeah. If it sounds good, it is good. If you're trying and, to meet a client request, this is a way to do it. Then you do that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I says it. It's one mic with many faces, and it could be a good gas problem solver. Gear, gear acquisition, acquisition syndrome. Yeah, yeah. It, can, it can prevent you from buying a lot of microphones. Or, on the converse, you could buy this mic, try out like seven or eight or 12 mics, find one, find one, one that was a surprise, and then eventually save up the money and buy the real thing. Oh. It could good could go the other way. Anyway, um, I did a little survey. I, meaning the crew over at my other my other apartment, <laughs> the Pro Audio Suite, um, we started talking about what would be the ultimate audio interface, and we decided to do a little survey about it. Okay. Um, I'm going to figure out a way to share it with you guys in a way that you can see it or find it. Maybe I'll I'll probably put it on the Facebook uh, page because mm -hmm. it's obviously a forum link and it's hard to convey over the show. But it's essentially a form asking you, what do you think is the ultimate audio interface? What features does it need to have? Are you happy with the one that you have? Et cetera, et cetera. Doing a little bit of market research. Okay. So we're going to see what comes out of that. Stay tuned. Pay attention to the Facebook group, and we'll make sure that you guys find that link. Uh, moving on, surprise from SSL. I just stumbled on this today. SSL now has a conferencing microphone. Now I don't. I know that doesn't really matter, but it's just weird that a, a, if you knew if you knew the lineage of SSL, I think of a giant console that would fill this entire room, mm -hmm. right? That yeah. cost three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, this is a little USB mic that's a square like this for one hundred fifty bucks mm -hmm. that plugs in with USB. So it is the antithesis of this. Yet they sell one now, and it's supposed to be pretty amazing because it it has four mics and it auto mixes so whoever's in front of the mic that's that's speaking it turns the other ones down oh so it's auto leveling it's, so if you're having like a conversation across the table right it's not hearing the room echoing because it turns the other mics down so it's not as it's not that problem with the usual conferencing mic where it's picking up the room ambience right it's really echoey sounding so it's not like an omni pattern it's right it's all it's individual things or like cardioids so it's picking up here wow. and then it does all that automatically i also found it interesting that it also multi-tracks so i guess if you're doing a podcast, podcast. with this thing yeah. and i again i can't vouch for the quality of it yet but you can stick it on a table like a card table around and sit literally the four of you around the single mic and it will not only live mix it for you but it'll also four track record it for you so you can mix it later 150 dollars, mm -hmm. pretty nifty little gadget if anybody's jones and spend more money and is going to, wanting to do a lot of that kind of recording um it would really be simpler than rigging up four condenser mics way easier okay um time for you to do some stand up here <laughs> joke time <laughs> um <laughs> i just this is the dumbest joke but it's right up my alley okay anyway 
the sound from a musician on stage bounces off the auditorium walls to create, to uh, surround the audience. The voice reverberates, right? Mm -hmm. The sound from a pigeon on stage does not do this. Do you know why? The why reason is, is a coup stick. Hmm. Oh, a coup stick. <laughs> okay. This is really stupid. It's awful. Get it? A coup of the coup. It sticks. It doesn't bounce around. Okay, I'll be here all, all week. week. Yeah, yeah. That's my joke. That's really it. It looked like a lot of stuff. It, to but cover. you you cruise through it. Trying to hurry. cruise through because we want to talk a little bit. Uh, Dan especially wants to talk about the changing market and technology. Tell us where you're coming from. Well, you know, earlier this week I was doing a lot of listening to a lot of different people's uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, files and saying, well, this is good, or your acoustics aren't right, or there's a hum in there. All the things that I do whenever I am talking about, you know, making sure that your audio is right. And then I started to think, you know, things have, we've been doing this show now for 12 years, and we've cumulatively doing voiceover technology and home studio technology for probably 30 years combined, if not more. And it occurred to me that in the 15 years that since we've been doing this particular show, what we've seen is we've gone from very simple interfaces, uh, firewire, which you were just talking about mm -hmm. and, and it retired and it retired and now a clothesline. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, Every time this happens, everybody's like, oh, now we have to go to something new and you have to be trained on it. Um, but the thing, the thing is, is every time there's a change in technology, generally it makes it more user friendly. That's and, the idea. Yeah. And people panic about it. Mm -hmm. but one of the points was we, I, and I sent you an article that was talking about podcasting mm -hmm. and podcasting went like this. And then went like that. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I bring that up? Because we're always talking about how in voiceover, none of the equipment, none of the equipment that we use was ever, 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 ever designed <laughs> for voiceover. It was all designed for recording music and producing music. And we're just borrowing this technology to do what we do and adapting it to our purposes. The thing is, is that when podcasting came along, and I'm, you know, I'm always saying, you know, in boardrooms, they're thinking, should we make a, po a, a voiceover microphone? Uh, podcasting came along and pew, took off. Everybody is doing a podcast. And as I like to say, just because you can do a podcast doesn't mean everybody should. And apparently people are realizing that because there were a lot of podcasts and now there aren't. Uh, I mean, there are, but the ones that have big money behind them and have good distribution and things like that. But a lot of the microphone companies and electronic companies started making podcasting equipment, not yeah. voiceover equipment, yeah. which gave us a little bit, actually a little bit more versatility. Like I'm using the, the Procaster, uh, the Rode Procaster, which was designed specifically for podcasting, multi-channels mm -hmm. and, and separating the channels and all that. You know, you took one look at that and I took, I said, but it's got all these features that'd be really, really good for a number of things. One, it's got really good preamps in it. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to control because it's got sliders on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was great for doing webinars because yeah. you could you change, you know, but it, add, a, add a lot of things in but there. But all that comes at a cost. Well, it wasn't cheap. Well, it comes at a cost of a learning curve. <laughs> right. Well, you got It's got a stuff. software control panel. Right. It's got layers and layers of menus. Right. Right. There's a lot to learn inside that. And so that flexibility comes at a cost. Right. And that is the more, there's a greater chance of you making mistakes in the clutch because there's more things you have to know. Right. To make it work. Exactly. Right. 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 And you know, it didn't take me long to learn it because you and I know the algorithms of how everything works. You throw a, 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 you know, a, a DAW in front of me. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. This is supposed to do that. And you work your way through and you generally can get up and running that very right. quick. But it has no gain knobs. Keep that in mind. Darn. <laughs> the knobs are actually push buttons on a screen. Right. That's the gain. That's not that intuitive, right? So there's pros and cons to all that tech. Right. But all this tech has come along, and then the question becomes, well, what should I get 
to do voiceover. Mm -hmm. And then I'm usually telling people, well, your audio sounds fine. Why would you want, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Mm -hmm. Uh, As long as something is working, you should probably stick with it because a lot of this technology, and we're always talking about this as well, is designed to help your workflow as opposed to the quality of your audio. If you're recording at 44.1 or at 48K, and and you know and not at 96 someone was wrote to me the other day should i do it at 96k I'm like well how big is your hard drive yeah double uh, the size of the file yeah. right you, do you want it that good it doesn't matter that's for recording sound effects for a, a oh, hollywood movie video games yeah. right or 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 nature photographers trying to catch all that for voiceover you're you're this far from the mic you don't need all that resolution to do yeah where i was going with this was that you don't necessarily have to upgrade all this technology just because it's there. Everybody's like, uh, I've got to have the newest and latest thing. Mm -hmm. And you really don't. If you've got something and it's working, unless it becomes obsolete because the software doesn't work with the OS anymore, because, you know, Apple's always updating their OS. Mm -hmm. Uh, Windows is like, I think they're constantly in motion. Updates randomly. Right. Google is constantly changing things. Google changes one thing, and your website is like, my email doesn't work because they changed one thing, and it breaks all this chain yes, of things. Yes. But when it comes to voiceover strictly, try and keep it simple. We're mm-hmm. always talking about keeping it simple unless a piece of equipment is going to change your workflow. It's not going to change the way you read copy. And if you're capturing yourself properly in all the ways that we keep telling you you should, it really shouldn't matter. However, if you happen to have gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and you're a real geek and you want to play with that stuff, Uh, like George does, and I do occasionally, I'm not a geek. I'm like, what works and what works properly? Uh And what makes, you know, if I, I want to be able to hit record and do my thing, in post, you can do all. my, My thoughts are always in post and getting it right up front so I don't have to do that much post. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And so I I don't worry about, I don't really worry about the technology. Uh, It's some of the cheap crap that was out there, say, 10 years ago. Like, yeah, you can dump that that one because it doesn't work anymore or because it's firewire. Or it was noisy. Or or it was noisy or the, you know, one of the dials starts getting scratchy or Mm -hmm. something along those lines. Yeah. So that's one way to, to look at it. What are your thoughts on that and how technology has changed? Because you really keep up to date. And actually, I came up with a new term. I, oh, what's that? You know, there's people are always saying, "Well, I'm, 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 I'm technically inept, or I'm, I, I can't handle the tech. I'm intimidated by tech, or I'm Amish, I, yeah, or something like <laughs> that." that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many Amish voiceover people there are? Probably not a lot, but. The thing is, is I've now come up with a new term. They are techno knots. Techno knots. Techno N O T. N O T. Yeah, techno knots. Techno knots. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm. I'm for one. I am frustrated that uh, the audio industry has not embraced the voiceover business, despite the the evidence showing that there's a tremendous amount of people that need this equipment um and need equipment that's suitable for their needs again isn't hopelessly mired in firmware updates software control panels layers of menus on and on and on which is what we don't want we just don't want that stuff in the way and so uh, yeah i'm i'm frustrated that that gear is either if it's on the analog side it has way too many features because it's a mixer Mm -hmm. right and it's mixing things Right. We don't need to mix anything. All we need to mix is what we hear in our headphones. Right. right. And then you've got the digital side where you have unbelievable flexibility, complete customization, like the uh, interface we use to mix this show. Unbelievably flexible system. It does unbelievable numbers of things. It has an incredible, uh, look at this user. Let me see if I can bring the user interface up just so you guys can see. This is the user interface of what I'm using right now to mix the show, right? It has an unbelievable amount of layers of functionality, right? On and on and on and on and on. And it's perfect for doing what we're doing, right? Except that having it doesn't make you sound better. 
It's knowing how to use it. Yes, yes. So I could make this thing be a fantastic sounding home studio interface, but it would require paying a guy like me to program it, get it working the way it needs to be. And then I have to tell you, don't touch anything, <laughs> yeah. which is not the way I want to set up a home studio. Even right. with, even in the analog days, I didn't like to know that I had to, um, you know, had to worry that if someone would touch that button or that knob, it would break things right. or that button might get dusty. And then if they don't press it every year, or a few times, it will sound scratchy <laughs> on and on, you know, it's like, so yeah, it's, it is frustrating. There's a huge hole. I feel like in the market for, um, an, a, an interface system that is just for, for us, for, for what we do. Right. You know, and I want, I want to see that change. Yeah. I mean, there are some very simple interfaces. Of course. You know, I mean, and ones that are really good, you know, the, the, you the, know, what? and they were suitable 10 years ago. Right. Because nobody had to do playback. Nobody had to interface with zoom. Right. All your job was, was to literally hit record. Right. And edit and then send the file. That was all you had to do. Right. But now it's like, well, you're going to be on Source Connect and then the client's going to be coming in on Zoom. We're going to send you a video as a reference and we'd like you to be able to share that video with the client because we didn't pay an engineer to do that. So it's mm -hmm. your job. And this is the kind of crap that voiceover <laughs> actors have to deal with, are saddled with, and it needs to be easier for them. No, you know? qu no question about yeah. it. But there are units that, you know, if all you're doing is one track, which is what you should only really be doing unless you're doing all these other things. And generally, if you move into the spot where you're doing all of that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. chances are you're making enough money to be able to invest in that better equipment in order to do that. Kind if of it stuff. existed, if it existed, I'm just saying, check the survey. I mentioned it earlier in the show. I will put it on the website, fill it out. You tell us what your thing does or doesn't do what you need it to do. And I just want to know more because I'm curious about what it would to solve those problems. Okay. I well, won't go into more detail. I cannot. Okay. Uh, mom's the word. Okay. If you've got questions for us, because as you can tell, because of the troubleshooting we do, <laughs> you can tell that we actually Live know what we're show. talking about. <laughs> Live on the show. Yeah. Just plug it in and this over here. That'll, that'll change things. <laughs> uh, but if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, anything has to do with interfaces, microphones, acoustics, because we all know that pigeons, pigeons. Yes. Because <laughs> the acoustics are very important. Um, any one of those things, if you've got a question, something that's bugging you, or you've got a problem with your studio, throw it in the chat room, whether you're on Facebook live or YouTube live, or you're watching this via, you know, shortwave shortwave still on. Yeah. I know several people still doing shortwave. <laughs> But the internet sort of killed that forever. DXing. Yeah. Um, but still fun. But anyway, if you've got a question about any of that stuff with your home voiceover studio, throw it in the chat room right now, and we will get to your question in just a little bit. But we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So don't go. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign, it's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. The voiceover recording sign, get not one, but two remotes, is about to end. Two remotes makes the sign even more valuable, since your significant others can send you messages as well. Or, of course, you have a backup if the dog decides to bury this cool thing in the backyard. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. And I will just move out of the picture. Well, it's that time in the show. It's time we talk about, sorry, guys, didn't tell you we were doing a spot live in the studio. It's time to talk about Source Elements again. Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and my camera is over here. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the reminder. Um, Source Connect is an incredible audio tool for connecting your studio with other studios around the world. And it's really become very much a standard. Um, 
and there's a lot of reasons for that. They've been around a long time. The tool's been available now for over 15 years. But not just that momentum, it's workflow. It allows the audio from the studio you're in, your home studio in most cases, but it could be another studio that you rent to do the session and it links you into their timeline. It goes, your audio goes right into the project directly, right in there and immediately is allowed to be played back and auditioned and listened to with the other elements of that production, the other parts of the mix. That could be voices from a television show because you're doing promo. It could be just the sounds of nature because you're doing commercials for Claritin or I don't know what. Whatever the other elements of that commercial are all there. And when they play it back, your voice is in there and the client gets to hear what that will sound like when it's all finished on the spot. And they love that. And that's what Source Connect can do. So get yourself set up. Be ready to use it, learn how to use it, and also make sure your studio is up to snuff. But if you're not sure, they will help you find that out. Believe, me, believe it or not, they are actually able to help evaluate your studio as well as Dan and I. And you can get set up at source-elements.com. Get that trial going over there and get familiar. Thanks, Source Elements. Let's get back to those questions right after this. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Yes, and we are back because we've got questions to answer. here. We've got questions. Because people have written in questions, which means... They go to the front of the line. That's right. They sure do. So if you want, if you have a question for us during the week, something comes up and you want to mm -hmm. ask us about it, you can write to us at the right, guy, the guys, that, put it right up there. So there it is. V O B S dot TV. TV. Yeah. And, uh, I, I am constantly on there going, Oh, here's an interesting question. And let's go with what was asked. Uh, yeah. Eve Florin asks, says, do you know when Source Connect will release a version that is notarized? Because of privacy vulnerabilities in older software, my techie husband seems to think it's a risk to install without being notarized. Now, does that mean you got to go get a notary stamp on it or something? Or what does that exactly mean? It is kind of fascinating. There, there are a number of things I install for people on a regular basis that require you to tell Apple that, yeah, I know the software isn't um, officially allowed to run on a Mac. This is the notarized thing. Um, but Apple still allows you to say, I acknowledge this fact and open anyway, right? There's this button that says open anyway. Right. And um, it's I, on the source element side, I think it's because that software has been, it's pretty old. <laughs> it's source element, source connect standard. 3.9.20 or whatever it is. Right. It's, it's been around a while. But it works. It, but it <laughs> works, right? And so they, they, they've decided to put all their eggs into the new version, all the eggs into the basket of a new version that's been in development for a very long time. But when it comes out, they'll have all those ducks in a row. But for now, they're relying on the fact that Apple does allow users to open an application anyway, even if it's not notarized mm -hmm. the only reason to not open something that's not notarized would be to open and install install and open something from somebody you have no effing clue who it is yeah, like if it's from that. a completely random website somebody somebody said here's a beta thing i heard or this thing is free it's amazing but you don't know anything about the company and they have no reputation that's a bad idea source elements has a long-standing reputation they are trustworthy 
if you can't trust who you're installing and you have to do the open anyway thing, then I would be a little bit more concerned, right? Right. I get that though. And yeah, every app should do that. It's, it's Apple protecting you and it's also Apple getting everybody to send them a little bit more money. It's a little bit of both. A little bit of both. They don't have enough. <laughs> no, it's a good question right. though. Part two to that question, yes. which is more to the point about what we usually talk about. Yeah. Not that Source Connect isn't something we don't, we talk about. Uh, she says, I have a Presonus audio box USB 96. And in order to have my voice reach between minus 12 and minus six, yeah, sort of, uh, I have to turn the gain up so much that it raises my noise floor. Any advice for a different preamp? It's what mic is it? That, well, that was my immediate question. <laughs> and I, I have not heard back from her. I'm like, well, okay. what, what mic is it? Yeah. But that has more to do with the microphone itself than the preamp. Because, Typically. yeah, a Personas Auto Bo Audio Box 96 got the resolution. It's got a good preamp in it. It That's should fine. not be a problem. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is if it's the mic, it's she doesn't say if it's a, an Audio Technica 2020 or uh, some, yeah. something along those lines that is – not perhaps the best uh, mic. A lot of them have a lot of self noise and the more gain you give it, the more noise you're going to have. Right. Or, and this is the one that always gets me because mm. I, I forget when I'm talking to people, what mic is it? Does it have a, uh, a pad on it? Oh yeah. Does I, it have I a 20, one. a 20 DB pad or a 10 DB pad? People are like, Oh, that should, I guess that's something important. It should be on. It cuts the sensitivity of the mic by 10 or 20 dB. That's right. And then you got to really crank the uh, the interface, and that brings up the noise level. Yeah. So whatever mic it is, if it has switches on it, like an AT2025 uh, has those switches. Yeah, the, the 2035 has pads on the bottom. Right. And a lot of other mics have a pad switch. Yeah. You well, do not want to use a pad switch for a spoken word voiceover. Right. Maybe screaming, <laughs> but in any standard spoken word, you do not want to make the mic less sensitive so also i don't know if she could be using a dynamic mic that's typically have much lower output ah, if you're i using, bet she's using an re20 or an sm7 SM and if that's the case yeah you probably do have the gain maxed out and if you have to run the gain wide open hiss is your is what's right. going to result right. that is almost always going to happen on these very affordable audio interfaces right. noisy preamps right if, if you happen to go to one of the retail online stores, and we won't mention any names, um, you know, like Banjo, Banjo and Gory or, or the, the um, Bitter Well. Um, I just came up with that one. <laughs> they are, they're like, they have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to voiceover. No. They're, they're recording engineers and they're musicians, and they have no idea that you're in your closet. And they see people buying SM7s and RE20s and stuff because that's what people are using for, because we were talking about before. They see it because it's on podcasts and YouTube. Right. Yeah. That's not voiceover. And the SM7 is great if you're Bruce Springsteen and singing real loud into it. And I know he actually uses one. Mm -hmm. But for voiceover, you need a studio condenser mic like this one and have it set up right in the right environment because or a shotgun condenser mic like or like like that one both of which i own um so that's i think that's an important thing that people need to understand is do not use a dynamic mic if someone says oh you need an sm7 from sure tell them goodbye because they have no idea what they're talking about yeah. stop using those now i'm sure people oh just put a cloud lifter on it which would make roger cloud very happy he is already very happy be about this yeah he's fine yeah roger is fine right so don't worry about it they've sold tens of thousands of right. those things. great for ribbon mics especially yeah. if you like ribbon mics but those are specialty type items for straight voiceover get a fine quality studio condenser mic and that will probably solve your problem so as you can see, the less con the less complete your question, the longer the answer, because right. we don't know so many different variables. Okay, um, Florida now, Dave. Yeah. Now I got this email today. Go to that website and see if you can share that. GoTools.com. All right. Uh, because what 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 he what he sent us was this fascinating thing, where okay. Go tools or go to tools. Go to tools. Yeah. That's so what we're looking at. yeah, go to tools has knockoff microphones and he sent me a picture and it looked like a neumann u87 
Like it's not the right domain. Obviously. Okay. Uh, well, go to tools dot com, or is it something else? Well, something like that. T O O tools. Try that one. No. no it's not well, anyway, mm -hmm. the question was: This is tempted to test drive this and see what the actual response curve. They say frequency response curve one times one reproduce well known design. Well, one, the fact that it's in bad English gives a clue. They're, these microphones that look like a TLM 103 and a U87 and 103 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, should I test drive this? Uh, and of course, then there's all this, you know, fake uh, reviews on it underneath. Like, oh, this is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Uh, Spell with a Z. Yeah. Go to tool. Go to tool. There you go. All right. Yeah. You you cannot buy a good quality studio condenser mic that looks like a U87 or a TLM103 and think that it's going to do great for you. It's nonsense. They've probably put an Electret condenser microphone in it and said, oh, look, it's a U87. They even have like a blue uh, diamond uh, logo on it. See that? Yes, they do. You know. Wait, that's not just any blue diamond logo. It's, but it says go to tools on it. Oh, that's, oh, uh, why okay. They, why do they have a picture of an actual Neumann microphone? Uh, because okay. the one they sent me does, does not have that. What? Anyway, the fact of the matter is, unless Sucks. it's, yes, these are like horrendous knockoffs. Sucks. Don't even think about it. They are going after people saying, oh, they're only going to buy, they, they don't want to spend a thousand bucks. This one took, to, you know, cost us, you know, five dollars to build. And it, it's, you know, and they're charging a hundred bucks for it. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm creeped out that the, that the microphone that's on their website is an actual Neumann. Well, it has Neumann badging on it. Ah, okay. But that's the, the part that really bugs me. Yeah. And, and well, it should. So, so Florida, Dave, no, <laughs> not, yeah. Major red flag there, man. Major. Red, well, it's, could you get lucky? Yes, you could get lucky. Um, we all want to get thing, lucky. But. Yeah, the thing is, you're not going to get any consistency from mic to mic. It's a complete crapshoot whether yours is any good. Um, and, you know, it's a pain in the neck. Yeah. Why bother? I mean, there was a thing with, with knockoff 416s a couple of there years was. ago. There was. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yep. it's a very special mic made by the people at Sennheiser. Yep. And they actually know how to do it. Yeah. I should have thrown the right URL in there because it, the picture was like, what? <laughs> just U87, it, it looked like a TLM 103 uh, and a U87, but yeah, not for 107 bucks. Not a fan. Not going to happen. Side. All right, you get the question from Grace Newton. All right, Grace. Uh, thanks to you guys and Byron, my noise floor is pristine. But someone told me they're investing someone. in a shotgun mic. I always love the someone. Someone. Did you ever someone. meet that guy? I, I know um, lots of someones. Because it, it makes it, it, because it reduces ambient noise. And that seemed odd to me. Is there any truth to that? Is there any truth to that? To a shotgun mic that that it reduces ambient noise. Well, it reduces sensitivity to ambient noise. Yeah. So, you know, because a microphone that's a shotgun type mic is more directional. Right. And thereby doesn't want to hear more of what's around the microphone. It's right. more direct. It's right. more directional, less sensitive to ambient. But we can demonstrate that because sure. if I go like, that in front of a 416 and then i go like this on a 416 you can hear that it is the axis is very very narrow yeah i'll mute your mic for a second so okay here is the here's this microphone so you can hear it picks up all the fingers moving the details mouth noise and then as i go over here it picks up far far less mouth noise it sounds more dull and so any sound that's like more background hissy noise or, you know, white noise or room noise or whatever, the mic's just going to hear a lot less of it. Right. So, but a 416 is a great mic. <coughs> mm -hmm. Bless you. Uh, the 416 is a great mic because it's very versatile and it's designed to pick up a human voice it is. from a distance. So you don't have to really be on top of it. Yeah, you can, if you have a good room, you can be pretty far away like I am right now. In fact, you can see I can get pretty far away. I'm, what am I, about a foot? Yeah, foot it's about a foot and a half, yeah. Maybe. And you can still, I can still get a present clear sound, but as I get closer, it gets a little bit more focused, a little bit more rich. And as I get closer, you get a little bit of proximity effect and it gets more and more kind of a, it's like a zoom lens, you right. know, it kind of zooms in the voice. So. 
four sixteen, great microphone. Knock off, not good idea. Yeah. All Dave right. G. Yes, uh, Dave G says, uh, "This is now this one's designed for me." Okay, acoustic fabric worth the upgrade on my sound panels, or is this ant? F- <laughs> yeah. Ant. Bleep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, sound panels. You can make sound panels real easy. Uh, there are companies that make really good sound panels. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is I have seen them made out of fiberglass, like, you know, audio, uh, you know, muting type fiberglass, rock wool. Um, amazingly, and you see this on, on, on YouTube a lot and in, in some articles, old towels. Old towels. Oh, yeah. The DIY perks guy did right. that. Right. Works great. You know. Now, the moving blankets from Harbor Freight. Okay. I actually mentioned a place, but they're cheap. They're, and, you know, they were having a giant liquidation. I was really afraid for the giants. But the. <laughs> Especially the liquid giants. The, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the giant liquidation. No, watch out. They were, they were like practically giving them away, like four bucks a piece. I'm like, did they smell like a chemical factory? They did not. Them? They oh, did not. Good, the blue good. ones do. The black ones are a little better. Hmm. They make now one that's like, it's like eight feet across. It can cover an entire booth with it. It's mm-hmm. just amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's green. So if you're like a green, you know. Uh, Trying to get a green screen in, in your back of your booth, you can do that. Two for ex- one. It's exactly. Just a little <laughs> bit of quilting in it. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, that's the, the blankets are great. Duvets are great. Uh, but the, the question is, is it acoustic fabric, is it worth the upgrade? Acoustic fabric, if you're talking blankets, great stuff. Uh, I'm still confused what the question means. Acoustic fabric. Like, I'm thinking of that, that's what you wrap your acoustical panel in, right? Isn't that what he's referring to? I'm not quite sure. Because acoustic fabric is essentially acoustically translucent. It has no sound of its own. Right, It and it sound will pass right through it right. into the, the absorption material. Exactly, it's like speaker cloth or something. Right. It looks nice. It's designed to make your panel look nice or co- color coordinate with your studio or whatever, but it should have no sound of its own. So I don't know if that's what you're specifically talking about. If you're trying to just upgrade what you already have and make it look pretty, that's great. Get yeah. some nice acoustical fabric, yeah. um, you know, and, yeah. and, and wrap those panels. Yeah. Now, I now as people know, I'm into antique radios. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the fabric on something that's 70, 80 years old is deteriorating. Moth-eaten. Yeah, exactly. And you got to replace it. But they make material for speaker grids for old radios, which is... I guess acoustic fabric. Is that what's going on over there? With well, that? it's some carpeting or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but it works, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, but I, I will, I will add those in. But they make that type of fabric. So is it worth the upgrade? Mm-hmm. It depends on what's on there now. If it's working now, exactly. It doesn't really matter. Right. Okay. Oh, from Jeff, that means I get to point the camera at Jeff. Mm, a little oh, bit I, more. I a little that, bit more. A little bit more. Keep going. Before. Yeah. Okay. Down and bingo. Go. He's not really there, but <laughs> I love it. That looks cool, man. Actually, I like that. Yeah. You a- should get that printed on the shirt. Yeah. yeah. Ask your question. George, does Source Connect work for audio uh, only or for video as well? Does Source Connect work for audio only? I had the microphone off. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, say it again, Jeff. Does Source Connect work for audio only or for video as well? Source Connect itself, the actual Source Connect app, is only carrying audio. There's no video signal. It will synchronize video. Like if you, if somebody sends you a video file, and you do have to use a more sophisticated application. Twisted Wave won't do this, but you could do this in Reaper or Audition or Twi- Pro Tools or Sound Studio, uh, Studio One. It has to be a multi-track DAW. Then you can have the video that's on your computer playback in synchronization it's called rts or remote transport sync so this is used occasionally for adr doing adr remotely because you need to lap match the lip flaps right so then you're re- recording along and the video is playing along and you're watching the and they're like take it again take it again take it again until until you nail the take and it matches um that's one of the very few scenarios where I think the video is, in, is, is ever a factor with source. But generally, 
um, very little video is being used in any Source Connect sessions that I've seen. It's rare. Right on. Thanks. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, question from Carlin Tools watching us. I on love YouTube. that guy's name. I don't know why. I, it's because it's George Carlin. Carlin, Carlin reminds me of George, and I love George. And it's Tools, which who doesn't love Tools? Hey, use this drill. What is not to love about that name, Carlin Tools? Anyway. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> He says, I use an Apollo twin in my studio, which mm -hmm. we're no longer really recommending to people, are we? Only if you hire me first. <laughs> Otherwise, you're, you're, you're totally screwed. <laughs> um, is there a travel version or a similar you recommend for traveling? Why do people buy Apollo twins and why do people keep recommending them? It has to do with the stuff it does that isn't really necessary. Well, it's because people want to have all the extra bells and whistles, like instant gain recall of certain gain parameters. I right. want my gain to be precisely 43 decibels every time I do an animation session with Nickelodeon. Well, you can save that as a setting, right? Right. Or they want to have a compressor that emulates a six, 1960s Teletronics LA-2A. Well, that's For some reason, do. yeah. Or they, they um, want to be able to play back the audio to, to Zoom or something and have that all happen automatically. Well, it can do that too. It's, it's flexible, it's routable, and it's also very confusing to use at times because of its deep software. Again, the software side of it's very complex. Um, but the only thing they make that's close to being travel friendly would be the solo. It's still pretty chunky. It's still a box like this, about this big. Yeah. You know, it's not small, but the solo does plug in with Thunderbolt 3, which is any of the Macs from the last eight years, maybe mm -hmm. since 2016. And um, so it plugs in with one cable. So it's kind of portable. Right. It's still not, it's not a mic port pro. Right. <laughs> in terms of portable. Right. So, but the thing is, is if you're on the road, all those presets mean diddly. Well, yeah, because those are going to be all tuned or set for your home studio. So they may not be relevant to your travel setup. So you have to be aware of that. Um, so yeah, it, your mileage may vary. Right. I've tuned those for people that are traveling. I've even tuned one for one of my clients who works in his Tesla when he's between locations and mm -hmm. he has to do a trailer. Talk about rarefied air. This is very few people <laughs> doing this. Yeah. But it happens, and then he loves that. Loves to be able to do that, right? <laughs> and and, and the, the the thing is, is there are really good rigs for travel. Like mm -hmm. we've been talking, we talk about the Centrix, uh, the Centrix Micport Pro Two and has a limiter on it, and yeah. and, the, and the three and the mixer face. Yeah. They're much smaller. They're the, the size of a cigarette pack, if you remember what those yeah. look like, and no uh, quality compromise oh none whatsoever the sound. and the yeah. sound is great and you know we've recommended it to some very high-end people and they're like this is fabulous yeah. so if you're looking for a good travel rig if you're looking for an interface that's going to work really well on the road that's one or anything that's small you know but if you're looking for an apollo twin substitute or something that does all the stuff that the apollo twin does because you want to do it on the road i'd say it's not really a good idea because you can't do the stuff on the road that you can do in your home studio it's very hard to get it to match yeah like if you're trying to pick up something on the road forget that's, it that's tough i mean maybe a word very hard yeah you know, if they change a word and i've done it tech i did it from a hospital bed once yeah with my ipad yeah, yeah. i will say this if you're super in love with the plugins from uad they do have spark now which is like letting you run uad plugins on your daw without the uad hardware that is a thing now mm-hmm so you could still, if you're really, really in love with the Avalon 737 or the whatever preamp processing thing, you can run those in Spark, UAD Spark, and that lets you run those plugins and even Twisted Wave or whatever and get the same exact processing without the actual physical hardware. So cool. there is that workaround if, if the plugins are what you're looking for. Okay. Now, Dave, Dave G has clarification. clarification. We always appreciate it. He says, further explanation to his question. Okay, this question is about the DIY burlap cover for sound panels versus acoustic fabric. For, oh. Uh, all right, the burlap covers. Dave, fine. does it work? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, are you are you inviting, you know, your, 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 your local senators or whatever in there? You want to impress them? Yeah, yeah you might want to do something. But wasn't there, wasn't there the company that had the coffee bags? 
Yeah, Coffee bean bags and on them. You could paint anything you wanted on them. Yeah. That was cool. ATS Acoustics, literally you can get them panels wrapped in used coffee bags. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing. <laughs> so I mean, don't worry the, about the it. The burlap works perfectly fine. Yeah. If you're trying to get this, like, furniture-grade fabric that looks really, really high-end, then buy the upgraded fabric from, like, Gilt, the Guilford of Maine brand fabric. Um, ATS has a, uh, a fabric that's more like a... Um, Micro suede. Ah, yes. And that it, that works pretty well, too. Um, but, yeah, it, otherwise, they're all going to sound, if they're designed correctly, they're all going to sound the same. Right. It's just a matter of how they look and the fit and finish. And right. And that's, that's always something interesting is people, the aesthetics of their home studio. Like, yeah, for some people, it really matters. It really matters. But to me, it's like nobody needs to see how the sausage is made. If you're in your closet around all your clothes and stuff, what good is, you know, well, I want the nice fabric. You know, I mean, yeah, I wanted red seats for my Camry, but, you know, that's something I use every day and other people get in my car. Right. And then presses the heck out of them. But right. uh, if that's important to you. I mean, you might, you know, you might be on camera a lot more these days and then it becomes more important to some of you guys. So it's up to you. But right. Whether it's a waste of money or not, that's up to you. Right. We can't tell you that. That's up to you. Right. So did I say that's up to you enough times? Yeah. Because four times. Because it is up to you. Not you, but you up the to point. them. <laughs> anyway. That's gonna, All right. That's going to wrap it up. That's going to wrap it up. Yeah, that's, that's, and I think that's plenty because uh, I think we covered an awful lot of stuff tonight. Good. You're not going to get this stuff anywhere else. George and I do this all the time. There are people that are like engineers and are like, oh, you got to use this processing and use all that. It's not your job. Your job is to consult with people who actually know what it is you're doing in your closet or your PVC booth, or in your studio bricks or vocal booth to go or whatever. That's right. But every room is different. Every voice is different. Every single home voiceover studio has to be tuned to you. And it's it's not what you have, it's how you use it. And yeah. that's what we explained to you. Mm -hmm. So that's going to wrap that up. Okay. okay, but it's not totally wrapped up because we got to take a quick commercial break and then we'll be mm -hmm. right back to tell people what's coming up right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> all right. All right. Wait, man, we just packed this hour with 
stuff that people even think you could even talk about. Hour plus. Absolutely. <laughs> but we'll, we, we will be back next week with another great guest live on Monday, February 20th. Excellent. Who that guest is? A couple of people. That we, who we have are, our lines in the water. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we need to thank all our donors, great people who are helping us out and making sure that we're able to keep things technically perfect, Mm -hmm. except for one particular power block, but that's a whole nother story. (laughs) A power block anomaly. That's really, all right, but let's talk about who has given to us this week. The Bristol group. All right. Robert Leadham. Steve Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Hey, Shell. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pentington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Can't wait to meet all these people. Donors. Yeah. Uh, like to thank our sponsors too, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com, a new website by the people who brought you VoiceActorWebsites.com. Mm-hmm. It is a totally templated system. You can go in there for nothing to start with and get your Voice Actor website up. We, we just started playing with it. Ten, daughter and I, 20 we're, minutes. We're finish our, your website. Because all you need with your website is your name, maybe your picture or a caricature of yourself, your demos, and your contact information. And that's all you need. And this will get you up and running as opposed to waiting six months to get a website because you're putting everything in. Voiceactor.com. Check it out. Check it out. And world-voices.org. Oh, yeah. The Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent, of which I am currently the president and CEO of. So you know it's being run well. Not that it wasn't before. We got WovoCon coming up in May in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And you got to be a member to go, but you want to go because it's a great conference. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you have need help with your home voiceover studio, the best place to go is to go to either George at georgethe.tech and and over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And that is going to do it for us tonight. We need to thank Jeff Holman for, thank you, Jeff. for coming in and doing the job that he does. Sue Merlino, mwah! Thank you, Sue. We're not even here tonight, but she did, did a great job. Our audience. Yeah, thanks to our audience, our audience. here. And that's going to do you it guys for are us. awesome. Right. Well, look, this is not an easy business. There's so much you got to know. You got to be a good actor. You have to know the business. You got to know the technology, or at least you have to have the right technology and using it right because you've been told to do it right. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I've been telling you guys this week after week. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whitton. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you next week, everybody. Don't forget.